Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. Police have released new information regarding a crash that happened in Central Sioux Falls at 1 a.m. Reports say Highway Patrol attempted to pull over a Chevy pickup truck, but the driver didn't stop in a pursuit suit. Sioux Falls Police say the pickup truck was speeding and failed to properly navigate a curve, left the roadway, hit a sign, crashed into a building at 11th Street and Waltz Avenue. The two people in the truck fled the scene, but were caught soon after. No injuries were reported. Damage to the building is estimated to be around $50,000. Sioux Falls Police Department is asking for help from the public to help locate a missing 33-year-old female. Haley Raylene Muller was last seen in Sioux Falls on January 15th. Muller has ties to Brookings. She has blonde hair, blue eyes, and stands at 5 feet 4 inches tall. If you have any information regarding her whereabouts, please call the Sioux Falls Police Department. The calendar might disagree, but winter is nearing its end at Great Bear Ski Valley in Sioux Falls. With the snow dwindling by the day, Great Bear will host a Snurt Fest on Sunday, its end of season celebration highlighted by a pond skim competition. But it's an unofficial finale as Great Bear will remain open as long as the snow holds up. Uh, when you look at the forecast, it's kind of up and down. Uh, Monday, it looks like upper 60s with a lot of wind. Uh, that's a, a, a formula for <laughs> melting snow. Uh, then it gets cold for a night. Uh, I saw a low of 12. Whether that would be enough for us to make snow, I, I kind of doubt it. I would need a few days in a row like that. Snurt Fest is Sunday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. with proceeds benefiting the Sioux Falls Area Humane Society. Great Barrett will be open to the public for skiing and snowboarding during the event. Before Sunday, we're going to be thinking about wind today and tomorrow, right, Megan? That is right. And then on Monday, some near record temperatures before a chance of snow on Tuesday. Right now, though, a little bit of sunshine peeking through those clouds in Sioux Falls, 43 degrees, a north wind at 16 miles an hour. As we head around the region in Rapid City, some sunshine, 52 right now, that northwest wind at 26. Here is a look at our current temperatures. We are warmer in western and central South Dakota where there is some sunshine. Right now, 49 in Yankton, 35 in Brookings, 28 in Sisseton, 44 in Mobridge, and that 52 in Rapid City. We do have some stronger northwest winds also in central and western South Dakota. Right now, anywhere from 10 to 30 miles an hour with some higher wind gusts. Reaching near 50 miles an hour was one of the wind gusts earlier this morning. We do have a few clouds working their way through northeastern Kelo land. We're not expecting anything to come out of these clouds. The next chance of snow comes on Tuesday and it will be very light snow. We're thinking under a half an inch total. For today, partly cloudy skies in eastern Kelo land. That stronger wind for everyone. Eastern Kelowland a little bit cooler than yesterday. 44 the high in Sioux Falls, 40 in Aberdeen, 51 in Pierre, and 53 in Rapid City. The wind dies down tonight with clear skies. 25 are low in Sioux Falls, 23 in Aberdeen, 27 in Pierre, and 30 in Rapid City. Tomorrow that stronger wind picks up back with some sunshine. Even warmer temperatures are on the way. 55 in Sioux Falls, 58 Aberdeen and Pier and 59 in Rapid City. And I mentioned the near record temperatures on Monday and a chance of snow the next day. We'll take a look at all of that with your seven day forecast in just a little bit. All right. Thank you, Megan. A state funding committee set aside $1.5 million today to cover the predicted cost of deploying South Dakota National Guard troops to the Texas border with Mexico. Governor Christy Noem announced on Tuesday that the National Guard will be helping to build a wall at the Texas border. The legislature's Joint Committee on Appropriations approved a House bill to be amended to include the $1.5 million deployment money. The bill is to, quote, make an appropriation for costs related to emergencies and disasters impact in the state and to declare an emergency. The Biden administration announced a new round of economic sanctions on Russia in response to their ongoing war in Ukraine and the recent death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny while in prison. Natalie Brand has details from the White House. On the eve of the two-year mark since Russia invaded Ukraine, the Biden administration says it's going after the Kremlin's war machine. We in the United States are going to continue to ensure that Putin pays the price for his aggression abroad and repression at home. 
issuing more than 600 new sanctions on companies, banks and individuals Friday. They target suppliers such as the company that makes the steel used in Russia's attack helicopters and include people and businesses outside of Russia that supply the military. Will they make an impact? George Washington research professor Bob Ortung is an expert on the region. Putin is dead set on continuing the war, continuing the invasion. So he'll find he'll likely find other sources of of support for his military machine because that's his top priority. The U.S. also sanctioned individuals involved in the imprisonment of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, who died in jail one week ago. In San Francisco Thursday, President Biden met with his widow Yulia Navalny and their daughter, who is attending Stanford University. Make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Alexei's death. The president said he hopes the new sanctions will force Russian President Vladimir Putin to pay a steeper price for his aggression. The White House also warns Ukraine is running dangerously low on ammunition and supplies while it waits for Congress to authorize more. So much. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer led a group of senators to Ukraine Friday. It comes 10 days after the U.S. Senate passed a foreign aid package that's now held up in the House. This is an existential question for the West. We have to make sure that Russia doesn't win the war. And I think that point will become clear even in, in the American political system. Professor Ortang says he believes a coalition of moderate lawmakers will come together to deliver the much needed aid. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Now, this latest round of sanctions means the United States has targeted more than 4,000 businesses and individuals since February 2022. A government shutdown is looming, and Congress remains at an impasse on how to avoid that scenario. Today, the federal government began the process of formally preparing for a shutdown. Congress returns to Washington Monday with a handful of federal agencies set to shutter on March 1st and the rest on March 8th leaving lawmakers little time to broker a deal. A shutdown would close all but the most essential functions of the government, along with shuttering national parks and museums. Both sides have tried to assure the public a shutdown won't happen, but that's appearing less likely.